Doing all right. Okay, so my question is, well, first I'm gonna kinda... Um... I need to give you this hammer. You're enormous, dude. Like, <laughs> you can wield this much better than I can. I look like one of the, one of the dwarves from, seven, from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I'm like, go mining or something. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, uh, first I'm gonna kinda paraphrase another speaker who kinda operates along your same tone uh, in America, Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so one of the things that he often talks about is at the basis or the premise of the ongoing debate between conservatism versus uh, liberalism is that at the basis of each, uh, conservative, conservatism is uh, like the, um, the protection of the hierarchy, whereas on the liberal side it's more so the pr protection and promotion of egalitarianism. And so my question to you is, well, one thing that he makes clear is that both sides are necessary for or are ideal in a country that moves forward at a fast pace as the United States has, has done. And so my question to you is, it seems as though you have a more hostile, you have such a hostility towards liberals and, um, and leftists, whereas I, I don't often hear you at all say that there's anything that you can learn from their side. In his book, 12 Rules of Life, one of the chapters is assume that the person in which you're speaking with has something to offer you as far as intellectually that you may learn from them. So my question to you is, um, I guess, what is your position? Like, do you feel as though a liberal, or obviously a liberal, but liberals in general or leftists in general have anything to bring to the table from an ideology standpoint or intellectually? I mean, passion for change is obviously, it can be a good thing when directed in the proper channel. Uh, the, as you say, the, the, the left's focus on egalitarianism is good so long as it is focused on the equal application of rights, not on the false attempts to override biology and natural hierarchy. So I think Jordan would agree with me uh, on the idea that if you run up, if you butt up against a natural hierarchy, uh, or if you butt up against natural differences, because I don't think every difference is a hierarchy. If you butt up against natural difference, you butt up against reality, trying to override reality with artificial equality is going to be a giant failure and can, as Jordan would say, murder millions in the, in the process, right? That's what Jordan thinks communism was, was basically there are differences between human beings. Failure to respect those differences is what, le in the name of equality, is what leads to the gulags. Uh, so while Jordan is, uh, you know, Jordan, uh, I think he's, he's a little bit less uh, robust in the language that he uses with regard sure. to the left, he's, uh, he's just as anti-left with regard to the focus on hardcore egalitarianism. Where the left, so I, I, I do think, and I do make a distinction between, as I've said, liberals and the left. left sure. uh, the, the, the left is a far more censorious force. And they want to censor a lot more. Uh, they're a lot more tyrannical. They want to control a lot more from the top. People who are liberals who are arguing over the proper scope of government in particular areas, there I think there's plenty to learn. And I think that you can have fulsome exchanges about the nature of what sort of social welfare state can be supported uh, or is appropriate. And you can have a data exchange on that sort of thing. Um, where you can't really have an exchange is when you're running up against, is when people are falsifying the facts as they are when they say that men and women are exactly the same, for example. So, um, so I appreciate the critique and, I, and I'll try to take that to heart. Sure. Uh, and I think that, and I will acknowledge also that I think that folks had a lot more to learn from the left in the 1960s than they do now. Because the sure. country has moved in, in a lot of very good ways since the 1960s and in some bad ways since the 1960s. Fair enough. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Can I ask another question? Or... Yeah. One more. Go for it. We have another one? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this, more, this has to do with the whole, um, uh, uh, you know, national anthem in players kneeling during games in the yeah. NFL. And so my question is this, is I feel that regardless of whether you agree with the act or not, someone taking a knee during the national anthem at the beginning of a football game, I believe that if you, if you don't say, okay, I disagree with the act, I don't think it's the right place, I don't think it's the right whatever the case may be, however, I agree with it in so much as I would like to protect that individual's freedom of speech. And my question is, I don't hear, well, you certainly, or a lot of any, anyone on the conservative side or uh, right side, as you would call it, um, as someone may call it, defending, saying, okay, look, I don't agree with it, but I agree with that person's freedom of speech in that moment, or you so, utilizing so that it, So it, it depends on the forum. So this is a public university. I have a right to speak here, right? There's a sure. difference between that and, for example, DePaul University. So mm -hmm. DePaul University is a private university. Last year, I think it was last year, uh, DePaul invited me to speak, or at least some of the students did. The administration said I couldn't, and when I showed up on campus, they threatened to arrest me. I didn't 
sue the university because they have a right to do that. I think they're wrong. I think they're foolish, but they have a right to do that. Okay. So Colin Kaepernick does not have the right to kneel on the sidelines of a private NFL event. If he wants to kneel in a park, now, he's more you, than welcome to do according so. According to who, he doesn't have the right. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have the legal right. He can't sue the NFL to force them oh, to... Oh, so he can't sue the NFL, certainly. So, so, so that, that's the distinction that I'm making. When it come, like, if, if Colin Kaepernick were to come here, like right here, you know, and like after the event that we haven't organized, he wants to kneel on the stage all day long, that's totally fine. It's a public university, he can do what he wants. So, I, so time, place, and manner restrictions are a thing, and so is private versus public. So I'll defend Colin that... Kaepernick's right to say whatever the hell he wants in any public area so long as he's not violating the rights of private property owners to control their property, because they do have rights that, like, he couldn't come into my living room and just kneel on the so floor. Do you, think the, do you think the conversation is based around the fact that the NFL is a private organization, or is it based, upon, based around the fact that they feel that that action disrespects our military in that moment because the national anthem is so associated well, I think the with... NFL, I think the NFL handled this in the worst way possible, which is they okay. let certain messages and not other messages. They right? were on so, the same page. Right, so like a few years ago, there were a bunch of guys in Missouri who did the hands up, don't shoot symbol coming out of the St. Louis Rams. They came out of the tunnel doing the hands up, don't shoot. They weren't fine, nothing happened. If the NFL wants to set a standard that you're not allowed to make political statements during the games or in the warm-ups or something, totally cool. But if they're going to be inconsistent in the, in the application of those standards, then I've got a bit of a problem with them. And I think that Roger Goodell has done a terrible job with that. It's, and you know how you know this? Because David Stern actually banned people from sitting for the national anthem in 1996 with Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, and nothing happened. He set the standard, that was the end of it. If you want to go protest, don't protest here, go protest somewhere else, and nobody cared. The, but that, that's really not even the large, look, the larger issue about Kaepernick is, you know, whether it is appropriate generally for people to kneel for the national anthem or whether we should be insulted by that. You know, my feeling is that it's generally not appropriate, but you have a, having a right to do something does not make it the appropriate or right thing to do. I don't think that kneeling for the national anthem is either smart politics or the right thing to do, because there are certain things that still have to unify us, like the idea the country is based on good foundations. And if he wanted to kneel for the national anthem outside a police station, I think that would be a lot more useful for his, for his supposed cause than, you know, taking millions and millions of dollars of contracts from Nike uh, 